So in a previous episode of Photoshop School where we were looking at the new generative fill within Photoshop, we used this image and we extended it as, as we did a few other images. Uh, basically, uh, we took the crop tool and we extended it up and uh, then just made a quick selection around the top part, including some padding on the actual face itself. And then using the generative fill, remember the generative fill is only available at present in the beta um, of Photoshop. And if you don't have your contextual bar here, just go up into Windows and then basically make sure you've got that contextual task bar um, ticked. Um, anyway, once that is done, uh, we don't need to actually type in anything um, to give it a prompt. Uh, remember, when you're doing prompts, just think of it without description. So in other words, you know, um, if you wanted to add in a, uh, a dog sitting, then you just say dog sitting, uh, not necessarily with any other command. Anyway, with this one, we don't. We just want to hit the generate and then basically six to 12 seconds, the uh, generative fill AI in Photoshop will kind of look at the whole image and it's gonna extend it for you. Um, now that's good. However, remember we are in beta and at present um, the, uh, so there you go, that's that's what it's done, yeah. But in, in the beta, um, you're also working in a kind of a low resolution. So if we look at the hair, in the generative fill compared to the hair on the glasses, you can see basically that it, it's not as sharp. Uh, in other words, it's low resolution. So to um, help it get sharper in areas where you want more de detail, um, all we've got to do is um, uh, set a specific sample er um, er area in the 1024. So if we go into, still I'm in the marquee tool, but now going from normal into the fixed size, and we've covered this before in Photoshop School, of course, uh, just click anywhere on your image. Let me just uh, scroll out a minute. And then you can see what I've done is I've selected the hair area again, um, because this is the part that is sharp. And it's at this point what I want it to actually act as the generative fill. So in exactly the same way, once I've made this selection in the 1024, if you wanted to add a little bit of an o overlap or pad a padding, make that less, um, something like 1010 or, or around there just to allow those pixels to overlap more. Because remember, generative fill really does want some padding. Anyway, once that's done, hit the generative fill. And then it's just going to sample that area alone. And what we should see now is a much um, clear, a clearer, sharper, higher quality uh, image based on the 1024. And then all we've got to do, so you can see already, we've got sharper hairlines and everything else. Then we just kind of click through and choose the best image. If it's not right, hit the generative fill again or generate, and that will actually give you some more previews again. Now, remember the image that we were looking at originally is as shot. So there is no cropped pixels that we're fooling you with here. So in the same way, what we've got is some other op options. And again, just depends on the one that you like. But remember the difference that we've got here, if we just go ahead and choose one of these, yeah, and I switch this top one off now, and we look at the original low resolution, you can see how uh, compared to the hair in the lower part of the glasses, compared to the higher part of the head that it's generated for us, the top part is low resolution. As soon as we kind of click onto the higher resolution, you can see we've got the detail there. So if you are wanting areas of a photograph that does have more de detail, you're gonna have to actually uh, use that simple trick using the likes of the 1024.